Hey, I just want to make a quick video on how to uh, very easily use the recipe builder um, as effectively as possible for your goals. Uh, now, there are times when you're just going to make meals that you have to use the recipe builder in order to encompass all of the ingredients. That could be things like uh, stir fries, lasagna, uh, casseroles, or even things like uh, a jerk chicken recipe, for example. Um, so what I want to do here is just show you a quick way to use the existing database of foods or your, uh, your logged database of foods that should be accurate provided you've been entering them correctly. Um, to to build a recipe really quickly so for example today i'm going to build a recipe for uh, chicken fajitas and um and i'll show you how to do that so first and foremost you're gonna hit the menu button and you can go to the recipes meals and foods um log and then what this is going to do is you can then create a recipe um and you can add it from the web or you, the web or you can enter the ingredients manually and entering the ingredients manually is going to be best so what you're going to do is just really simply uh, go, I'm going to go chicken fajita here. And I'm going to leave it at eight servings right now because that's approximately how many servings we get out of uh, this dish when we make it. And then I'll hit the next button. Uh, you can add ingredients. And what you can do, which is really fancy here, is you can use the barcode scanner, which is awesome. Um, we're not going to use the barcode scanner right now just because I'm going to show you how easy this can be with um, just just searching so in this case i'm going to search usda boneless skinless chicken breast raw and that's going to give us uh this approximate this first one at the top here um and in this case this is one of my entries already so i'm gonna i, I know that it's correct and this was uh, i used 1400 grams total so just over um just over a, a kilogram so 1400 grams total is what i used um, and then I'm going to search um, Old El Paso Fajita. And this should bring up just the seasoning. Um, and let's see what that comes up to. So yeah, right there, the uh, Old El Paso se uh, seasoning packet. And each one is two tablespoons or two, I believe, one package is uh, 12 teaspoons. So you're just going to log one or two packages depending on how many using. For this recipe, we used two packages total. So we're going to save that, and then we're going to search, um, I used uh, peppers, onions, and mushrooms uh, in this one. So we're going to search USDA peppers, or in this case, it was red peppers. And this is going to bring up a USDA um, uh, red pepper, and there's a couple different um, entries here that you can use really, but you know, with peppers and stuff like that, we just want to find one that has a grams option. Um, and this one I used 300 grams total. So I'm going to switch and log that, save that one, add another ingredient, USDA red onion is what I'm going to search next. And that's going to pull up this first one. Again, it's in a gram option. So I'm just going to use that. And this one we used 150 grams. I'm going to save that. And last but not least, I used um, uh, white mushrooms, so USDA white mushrooms. And this one's in ounces. Um, we don't necessarily want to use that, but we can check if it's got a gram entry, which it does. And in this case, we're going to use uh, this one. I used 125 grams of mushrooms. Uh, and you can see the calorie differences on the calories on, on this kind of small stuff is minimum, but we do want to track as accurately as possible. And then last but not least, I used uh, two measured tablespoons of uh, olive oil. So we're going to search USDA olive oil. And really simply, that's going to bring you up um, a couple different entries. So you have uh, grams, you've got cups, uh, you've got teaspoons. Um, in this case, you can weigh it or you can measure it with spoons. Either way is fine. They're both going to be equivocally accurate as long as you're using actual measuring spoons. Um, so in this case, you're going to break it down to um, this one doesn't list that, so we can't use it. This is a, actually a really great example. This one does list teaspoons and tablespoons. So in this case, I use two tablespoons. And um, actually, I didn't because that's a ton of calories. I use one tablespoon. Um, and now this has logged all of the information and that's my my uh, my recipe. So the only reason it's actually taken me more than a few minutes is because I've been speaking for this message, right? Uh, the next thing you do is hit the next button at the bottom and you have a couple options for how you wanna log your recipe. 
you can divide it up into equal servings, uh, which means that you're weighing the total serving as it, once it's cooked and then dividing it into your containers. Like if you're meal prepping this, you could do it that way. So in this case, I would just leave it at eight servings. Um, in any case where you want to store the whole batch and pull from it as needed, you would weigh the total cooked serving in grams, like the total cooked amount. Um, that's everything. And in this case, it weighed uh, 1200 grams. And, um, and then I can save that. Once this recipe is saved, I can then add it to diary. And all I'm going to do is either weigh out my servings um, as grams. So in this case, I had 300 grams of it. And that will save the, that'll do the math accordingly. Um, and in any case where, um, where I need to log it as a single serving, I'm going to go back and just show you how to quickly change that. So we'll edit the recipe and I want it just to say servings instead. So this one we divided it by eight servings. We'll save it. We're going to add to diary. And in this case, I had two servings um, and I had it for lunch. So we'll save that. And now I know it's accurately logged. Um, yeah, and that's kind of how you're going to do that overall. Um, you know, let me know if you have any questions on building recipes or how to make this work for you. Have a good day.